Let us pray. Father, encamp your angels round about us and pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may clearly understand and take to heart those things which you teach us today and every day in Jesus' name. Okay, out of uh, our faith at 150 hymns. Our text is going to be uh, Psalm 100. Now, there's almost all ladies here. But I'm sure I've been before, and I know I have. Have you ever taken the Thanksgiving inventory? If you have, it probably went like this. Turkey? Check. Cranberry sauce? Check. Pumpkin pie? Check. And acids? Double <laughs> check. Here's a better Thanksgiving inventory. Loving family? Check. Good friends? Check. Food to eat, check. Clothes to wear, check. A church who loves me, check. This kind of Thanksgiving inventory is a checklist of things you're thankful for. A list of people and things you're glad to have in your life. Things that cause you to be thankful to God because he has blessed you. This is my third message on Thanksgiving leading up to the Thanksgiving holiday. And we're concentrating on thinking about Thanksgiving in a radical way. We're thinking about Thanksgiving in the context of giving thanks. This morning we want to move beyond the superficial to the real. We are, and should be, thankful to God for all things. Every good thing we have comes from Him. But sometimes we get hung up on stuff, the results. We forget the source or where the stuff comes from that makes us so thankful. I want to add an item to your checklist. And this item should go at the top of your list. Here it is. Add this to your Thanksgiving inventory. Thank God for being God. Have you ever thought about that? Is that even a reason to give thanks? For God being God? Well, let's see. Today we're going to look at one of my top 150 psalms. And by the way, there's only 150. We're going to read Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. This is the psalm of thanksgiving. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. The first line, verse 3, and the last line, verse 3, or is the trunk of the psalm. Acknowledge that, is, that the Lord is God. That's the first 
point of uh, verse 3. Give thanks to him and praise his name. That's the last end of verse 4. The entire psalm is focused on God as God and thanking him for who he is. The rest of the psalm is the branches that grow out of this trunk. The branches tell us why to thank God for being God. The branches also tell us how to thank God for being God. So that's what we're going to do today. First, we're going to see why we should thank God for being God. Second, we're going to see how we should thank God for being God. We thank God for being God because he is loving and good. If we read Psalm 100 and the beginning of verse 5, for the Lord is good. God is good. This means he is worthy of approval. And this word in Hebrew takes up the word good in all its facets as a noun, as an uh, adverb, as an adjective, He's worthy of praise. He's righteous. He's good. The whole nine yards. This word takes up. Everything he does is good because he is good. His grace is good. Unmerited favor and unconditional love for us. His mercy is good. His withholding the punishment we deserve is definitely good. His love is good. His affection and care for us no matter who we are. God loves us and has grace and mercy for us. That's because he's good. Is that not a reason to thank God for being God? We thank God for being God because he is good. Now, we thank God also for being God because he is faithful. If we read it, Psalm 100, verse 5, uh, at the end of the verse, his faithfulness continues to each generation. This means he is dedicated and committed. He is faithful to every word he has said. What he says, he means. That means God is always reliable and consistent. Our God is the God who can always be counted on to always be as he is. Is that not a reason to thank God for being God? We thank God for being God because he is faithful. And we thank God for being God because he made us. In the middle of verse 3 in Psalm 100, it says, He made us and we are his. How did you get here? I mean, into this world. Yeah, there's the biology behind it all. But you never would have happened without God. He wanted you to exist. He wants you to live life to the fullest. Is that not a reason to thank God for being God? We thank God for being God because he made us. It's even said by some church theologians that 
our whole existence relies on the breath of his mouth. He stops breathing for us. Goodbye. So with each breath, he acknowledges he wants us to be. We thank God for being God because he is God. Now, if we read the first part of Psalm 100, verse 3, acknowledge that the Lord is God. He is God alone. He is the creator. He is the sustainer. He is the king. He is the great I am. There is a God, and he is good and loving and faithful. Is that not a reason to thank God for being God? We thank God for being God because he is God. We are not alone. We are not random mistakes. There is someone in total and complete control of us and this universe. There is a supreme being. And he is divine, and we know him. So we should shout for joy that the Lord is God. We should worship the Lord with gladness. We should come before him singing with joy. We should acknowledge that the Lord is God. Why? Simply because he is God. Be thankful. The Lord's love is unfailing and continuous. In verse 5 it says, For the Lord is good, his unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. God's love for us cannot and will not ever stop. It never stops. And it never will. We should thank God that we are loved. We should thank God that he is totally and consistently wrapped up in us. Let's be thankful that the Lord's faithfulness never ends. Verse 5 of Psalm 100. God never changes. The things he said will never change. His promise of forgiveness through Jesus Christ is always true for everyone, for all time. His promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ is always true for everyone. We should thank God that he is always faithful to himself. So that's why we should give thanks to God. We give thanks to God simply because he is our God. There's a lot of poor excuses for God out there. The person you look at in the mirror, Buddha, uh, the thoughts of Confucius, um, Jainism. There's a whole slew of them out there. But there is the one and only God who sent his son to die for our sins and redeem us from hell and death. We give thanks to God simply because he is our God. Now, how can we best express this thanksgiving? We thank God with singing, gladness, and joy. Read Psalm 100, verse 1 and 2. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. 
Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. If there's anything Christians should be, is that we should be full of joy. We have a God who is merciful, gracious, and loving. And none of us deserve it. We should be full of joy. We should not let anything rob us of the joy we have. We ought to be shouting from the joy we have in our hearts. We ought to be singing out. We ought to be glad we have a God and he has us. We thank God with praise. It's written in the Bible, the Lord is enthroned on the praises of his people. Now, if you read Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. Praise means to boast, to applaud, to celebrate. Boast to him about who he is and what he means to you. Applaud his greatness and holiness. Celebrate his existence. Celebrate his very being. We thank God with thanksgiving. Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. This is not just words of thanksgiving. This is an attitude of thanksgiving. This is a heart position of constant thanks for all our God is. The last place for deadness should be this church. The last place for an attitude of defeat is in the Christian. I want to challenge you to make a fundamental change in your Thanksgiving this holiday season. Base your Thanksgiving not on what God does for you, but for who he is to you. And children, let us pray. Father in heaven, through your son Jesus, we do thank you and praise you and bless your holy name for all you are to us. Our creator, our redeemer, the indweller of your Holy Spirit in our hearts, the very love that beats in our heart. Lord, let us not take you for granted, but in every which way, Lord, let us carry about a spirit of thankfulness for you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.